Rhesus 2015 is well underway now and uh, many voices are being heard at various debates and conversations throughout the buildings at WIPO and the International Telecommunication Union. Union. One of those voices belongs to Cyril Ritchie. He's the president of Congo. Congo is uh, the group that speaks for UN NGOs here at Rhesus 25. Mr Ritchie, uh, welcome. Thank you. Very welcome to, to be here. Very it, glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, You've been observing the process here and in other conferences as well. Uh, you believe that there is, there are lessons to be learnt from the WISIS process that might have broader application in the whole uh, development ecosystem. Yes, when the WISIS was first held in 2003 and 5, there was a, already an innovative approach to bring in civil society into the debate on a more or less equal level, of course, the ultimate decision-making is governments, but an equal level at the, at the debate and discussion and drafting stages, uh, with, with business as well, of course, and academics. So it was already a new departure for the UN to go beyond the traditional consultative relationships that are foreseen through ec the Economic and Social Council. And that has been strengthened throughout the WISIS process over those 10 years since, since Tunis. Uh, and it's been a very open process. The, uh, the, the Secretariat, based on ITU, but with all the UN agencies that form part of the, the WISIS management, have been very careful to ensure that they bring in as many stakeholders as possible. And it's that openness and transparency that we need throughout the UN system. Some parts of the UN system are very open to civil society, some are not. And the Sustainable Development Goals that are coming up uh, need to be open to civil society and other stakeholders. And that's why I have said already this afternoon in the session that the, the lessons to be learned from WISIS must be incorporated now in the final stages of the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, which will be happen in September next, and above all, in the implementation of them. That the implementation also requires multi-stakeholder participation. So that's the main lesson, I would say, from the process of WISIS. Okay, so the process you've found inclusive uh, to the extent that you, you have a voice at the table. Have you and your organisation been effective, you think, in changing policy or helping formulate policy in those 10 years? Well, I think some governments have particularly learnt that uh, they cannot provide the answers to everything themselves and that there is a great deal of grassroots experience out there in, this, in civil society, as well as academic and professional, I mean, that's, which is essential, scientific. But there's a great deal of grassroots experience that needs to be brought into the discussion. Government civil servants can't possibly know all that happens around the world, and in their own countries even, uh, what the initiatives that have been taken by local civil society groups. This is both a local and a national and an international process. And that the more the governments, as the decision makers, open their debates to competent input from civil society and others, the better their decisions will be because they'll be based on more accurate information and a wider, a wider range of experience. Well, Mr Ritchie, I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.